Hey guys, Sableye here, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be featuring Binji Wang's Xerneas team, which is a really cool team, and they also managed to finish in the top 30 of the ladder last season, which is just really impressive, especially considering Xerneas. Like, I don't know, Xerneas hasn't been used a lot in this format, so seeing it be used successfully is actually really, not only really impressive, but also really makes me happy because like I love Xerneas for those of you that don't know but Xerneas is honestly one of my favorite restrictives to use so seeing that there might be a slight glimmer of hope in the metagame for it is really really nice so gonna be a little bit unfamiliar with these matchups but I say we jump into things and figure it out so I I really do think Torkoal <laughs> the thing is Torkoal is great here minus the Gastron and minus the Calyrex right other than that Torkoal is gonna go crazy here and I think because of that, I need to bring it. Like, I almost think Venusaur Xerneas is good here. Because what it does is it forces their hand, right? If they go something like Thundee Zacian, I have an immediate Torkoal switching in the back to boost my Venusaur, which I think is what you need with the Xerneas team, right? You need to have reads, and you need to force reads. And that's why I like the Venusaur Torkoal mode. Just because, like, if I leave Venusaur, there is so many things I could do. I could switch Xerneas out, have Torkoal coming in the back. Uh, obviously, I need my own Zacian as well. But I guess in prison, leading Zacian with Imprison also isn't terrible into this. But if I lead Zacian to like Sunday Cali, is that? I am. I am gonna change my mind. I don't know if it's gonna work out for me. But uh, it's still a very similar concept, guys. Don't get me wrong. I'm still having the Venusaur leap as pressure. I'm just leading it with Zacian instead here, right? Because. I think it's a little bit more consistent rather than being almost forced to switch out immediately if they lead Zacian. Now I'm actually in a pretty decent spot if they lead Zacian. Right? Which I think a Zacian lead isn't unlikely here, just given the nature of their team. But let's see. Like, Thundee Zacian wouldn't surprise me, but we're actually going to are going to see Sun Thundee Cali. So I had it right the first time, which is a little less than ideal, but not terrible. Nothing terrible. So. I have opportunities here, I have to call whether or not they want a Dynamax. If I call the Dynamax and I just put this Thunderous to sleep, we're not in a bad spot. I could, on the other hand, also just Dynamax this Venusaur immediately, start getting Vine Lashes up, and just do some chip damage that way as well. Because I do have Torkoal, right? Now, I don't want to hard- the thing is, I don't want to hard switch Torkoal in here. Because if I'm hard switching Torkoal in, it's going to take an Astro Barrage. And I don't think Torkoal really appreciates taking an Astro Barrage here. So, the question becomes how I want to play this. I guess I could stay in and sleep out of the Calyrex, but I don't think that actually gives me anything. So, this is probably just a rough lead. I should have stuck with the Xerneas. <laughs> I should have stuck with the Xerneas, guys. Um, we are going to have to go for this play. Uh, I am going to sleep out of that, because if I can catch the max, it's way, more be it's way better. Way more beneficial, and I go into Torkoal here. It's, it's just my best play at this point. It's, I have to just kind of connect on this. It was a rough lead. Had I led Xerneas, I'd be in a little bit, a little bit better of a spot. But right now we're going to get the sun up. We need to stop the, I guess they could also psychic move and ignore my Torkoal. We do catch a max. Now the question is, are we going to catch the max? Or is it going to be the Calyrex that's maxing? Or are we just going to miss Sleep Powder in true stable life action? But let's see. It is going to be that Thunder. So they're either going to be Lumberry or they're going to dodge. Or hopefully we're going to get this thing to sleep. Now if we can get this thing to sleep and completely nullify a turn of Banamax, that is absolutely massive because I will max this Venusaur next turn. But we'll see what they're going to go. We're going to connect the Sleep Powder. Any Lumberries. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. They are going to Astro Barrage, which of course is going to hurt. It is going to leave leave a mark for sure. Uh, yeah. And by it's going to leave a mark, I mean it's going to leave a mark. Now the good news is here that... I'm still faster, so I could actually go for another Sleep Powder, which I'm thinking I might have to do, right? Because Dynamaxing doesn't really help me all that much here. So I'm going to go for the Sleep Powder, and I'm going to Hard Pivot Zacian. If they decide to wake up, they should be targeting down Venusaur with the Thunderous anyways. And if Venusaur goes down to the Thunderous, well, then I get Xerneas in in not so bad of a position, assuming Calyrex goes to sleep here. Like, if the Calyrex takes a nap, And Thunderous wakes up. I think this is still okay as long as we get the right turn to sleep. But let's see. Obviously, yes, I'm just spamming Sleep Powder, guys. But this is off of a bad lead on my end. I don't think I should have led what I led. Uh, we do get the Sleep Powder. We actually do connect. And we are going to put this uh, Calyrex to sleep. How many turns of sleep are we going to get on the Thundee now, though? Is one of the main questions here. Fast asleep on the Calyrex, which is nice. 
and fast asleep on the thunders as well so we've now burnt two turns of their dynamax which is absolutely phenomenal and you can you can't really ask for more in that position so the thing is now I could dynamax and I think it's in my favor to do so the question is what do I want to kill like I don't think maxing Xerneas is gonna win me this game here I guess I could just weather ball behemoth blade instead of maxing but I'd rather almost kill the thunderous yeah I'd rather kill the thunderous here this will be max flare and this will be a behemoth blade this should kill Fundy. I mean, I, I know they're AV, so if it doesn't, it's a little rough. Like, maybe Vine Lash into Calyrex was just the optimal play here. Right? But, we'll see. We'll see what we get. This isn't a terrible play, assuming we get the sleep turns. But this is really, really banking on sleep turns right now. Which is not what you really want to do. But, like I said, bad lead. I'm kind of just... I don't know. I'm feeling out this team. and like, The team's good. I don't think I'm good with the team yet. But it's literally my first game with it. We're going to get the max play. Hopefully does enough to this Thunderous to a spot where mm, Behemoth Blade is not never gonna pick that knockout. We do get the K uh, the sleep turn on that Calyrex, which is phenomenal. And we are gonna get a Behemoth Blade off here. Uh, let's see what we get out of this Thunderous. If we get another turn of sleep, I think we just win. Like it's just ridiculous if we get a three turn sleep here. <sighs> All right, so sometimes sleep powder just be broken, you know. Sometimes sleep powder do be broken like that. Now we go Vine Lash into Calyrex here, guaranteed. And I just became a I still take out the Thunderous. There's no reason for me not to kill the Thundy. Because it's guaranteed to wake up this turn. I, I'm not going to give it the opportunity to wait. I guess in the other world, the other play is probably Vine Lash to Thundy. Which is actually bar safer. Yeah. This is on me. I got a Vine Lash Thundy there. Oh, uh, they are going to wake up with the Calyrex, which is fair. Astro Barrage is going to come out. Not going to kill anything, which is nice. And Behemoth Blade, of course, going to pick off this Thunderous. So not in a terrible position, not in a great position, but we do get our Vines up, which is not a bad spot. We killed their entirety of their max. I, I think we're going to have this game, guys. It's just going to be a matter of actually actually closing it out properly. Like, I could have closed that out. I mean, I still would have taken the damage there, but I would have had two things off the field, and they would have only had two Mons left, right? Now they still have three Mons left, and Calyrex could potentially switch out, pivot around. So that I'm not faster than it in the end game. So, uh, speaking of Zashian, there it is. Even though I said nothing about it, but there it is. So uh, here's one of the things where, with the sun up, this is simply going to be. I'm going to click imprison, and I'm going to go vine lash again into this Calyrex. What do they have in the back, actually? Vine lash is fine. I mean, if it's an instant, I don't really care. And imprison. Imprison Zashian just feels kind of, kind of dirty. <laughs> Anyways, they are actually going to switch the Zashian out here, which I'm okay with. It's going to be that instant as well. So I think we're okay as long as Calyrex goes down and I get an Imprison up. Because then I just protect Zashian next turn. And, I mean, there's not a whole lot my opponent can really do to get out of this. The main concern here is going to be finding a way to kill instant. Because if I can't kill instant, that Zashian on their end is going to be able to attack. And if the Zashian on their end is going to be able to attack, it becomes very rough. The other thing is, I could just kill the Zashian, knowing that the Zashian can't protect. We'll see. If I have another turn of Sun, which I don't think I do, I believe I'm out of Sun, right? Because I swapped it in turn one. We've had our three turns of Max plus the two turns of Sleep Powders. So we should be out of Sun here. And being out of Sun, which I believe we already, I just, I have, I've already missed the notification of it. But being out of Sun makes this interesting now. Because now, yeah, I have the Imprison. But what am I really doing with the Imprison here? Right, I haven't done much. Right, I, I think a Zashian Protect is is almost obvious. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hard pivot Torkoal and I'm going to reset the sun this way. And I'm just going to Protect for the time being. And then next turn what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and go Overheat and kill the Zashian. If, ass that's assuming I still have my Torkoal. Right, they, they also might not have Sacred Sword. And if they have don't have Sacred Sword, well then they can't do anything here. Then they're going to have to either sub or sword dance or whatever else they have. Right? Because Behemoth Blade and Player Off I have been turned off. So I definitely see the advantage of Imprison. But like, like I said, I've never used it. So it's going to be interesting. They do have the Sacred Sword. They do catch the Torkoal on switching. Thankfully not going to kill him. We are going to see a Flare Blitz straight into my Zashian now. Okay. So this is where things get interesting, right? Because 
I have Vine Lash for another turn. I think it's in my best interest to simply double the Zacian. The other option is protect Torkoal, switch out my Zacian, so I can get it in Behemoth. So I'm in. So that Zacian is. So I can just kill it with Behemoth Blade. But then they can protect, and things get interesting that way. I think doubling Zacian is safe here. See, it's not though. Uh, it it is because. Mm. It, it, yeah, it, it's fine because we're in sun. It's fine because we're in sun. We're in sun, so it's okay. If we weren't in sun, I th I'd say it's a little bit of a risky play. But knowing Venu can come in, in the back and just outpace it in the end game, we'll be all right. So Behemoth Blade's gonna come out, hit the Zacian, of course, gonna do about 50. Nothing too crazy here. Uh, they should Sacred Sword Torkoal again and Flare Blitz my Zacian. There's no reason for them not to do that. That's just the correct play. But that's fine, like I said, because we're in sun. Flare Blitz comes out, they get chipped down again. We get another chip of Vine Lash damage onto the Zacian as well. Obviously didn't utilize the Imprison to the best of its ability, or really anything to the best of its ability in this game. I am very much so, <laughs> very much so partying right now off the sole fact that we had a very good early game. That's literally the only reason we are in any sort of position to win this. Um, at this point now, it's just Geomancy and Earth Power into the Zacian. Xerneas is not going to die to a Flare Blitz from this Incineroar, and because we have Dazzling Gleam, even if they protect their Zacian this turn, we just simply Dazzling Gleam off to the W next turn, and the game's over. So, there's one way we lose this game, and it's not even a way we lose this game. Okay, I mean, if they Flare Blitz crit, kill my Xerneas, and get like a triple protect Zacian to outstall my, to outstall my son, I mean, yeah, we lose this game. But like, if that's the case, I mean, then we just cry. I mean. Then we just cry. I guess Weather Ball is technically the better play here. But Earth Power also kills. So like I said, they are going to protect. Literally did not matter what I was going for into that end. Um, the question is, do they kill Venusaur or do they hit the Xerneas? I feel like you have to hit Xern. But at the same time, they also have to hit Venusaur here. Because if they don't hit the Venusaur, Venusaur just kills the thing next turn anyways. But that was the pin I had. Right? Yeah, they kill. That's why I double attacked last turn because I have the sun. I have the speed advantage on Venusaur. So Venusaur comes in. It, like I said, just has the speed advantage, and I've pinned them. Right? They have to protect Zacian there, and because they have to protect Zacian, I get a free Geo. And regardless of which one they hit here, I'm still gonna have a piece that's faster in the end game. They do hit the Venusaur. Uh, that's fine. Dazzling Gleam will pick up this Zacian now, and uh, should pick up the Instant at the same time. I would presume. Yeah, yeah, for sure. From that range, for sure, and. Uh, you know, late game Geomancy isn't the, isn't normally the the method of this team, right? What you want to do is you want to get the Geo up early, then have them get their Zacian and either protect or max strike to get their, and then have your Zacian on the field and imprison, and then they can't do anything and Xerneas just cleans the game up. But yeah, no, it's uh, I I I think. I got bailed out there by sleep by sleep turns for sure. Like we literally had their thunders asleep the entirety of the the entirety of its max, right? That's that's a huge factor. But like, it was also a terrible lead on my end. So I don't want to just like spam sleep powder if you know what I'm saying. But that's why you have it, in my opinion, right? That was a terrible lead from my end. Like there was nothing nothing about that lead on my end was good. The only thing that was good about that lead is I had to get out of jail free card with sleep powder, and Sometimes you just got to, uh, you just have to accept it. And that's why it's there, right? right? It, I got lucky. I'm going to be honest. I got lucky. But you know what? The team, it, it worked out. We're going to get Roxim here. Roxim, what do you got for us? Okay, cool. Very, very unique uh, team, guys. I'm sure none of us have ever seen this team before in our lives. But uh, hey, <laughs> I don't blame them. It's a really good team. Um, anyways. Once again, Venusaur is a fantastic lead into this, into my opponent here. This time I don't need Torkoal though, because you know they're going to be wanting to set Sun. And I just have Venusaur. And if they set Sun for Venusaur, we are literally partying. Now I could go Venu Indeedy, which is something interesting that I don't really think I've ever gone for or really ever considered on any single team. But what this does is it stops Grimmsnarl. Now I might not even need to bring Indeedy to stop Grimmsnarl, right? They might just not bring Grimmsnarl for the sake of not bringing Grimmsnarl. I wonder if I can get away with this. I think I can. Just because they have Sun. I love Lando for this matchup a lot. And I go Zacian as well. This is a little scary. I guess Lando in DD is also really good. But we're gonna try it this way first. Hopefully they give me the Sun. I don't think they want to be bringing 
Grim Snarl this matchup with the Ndidi on the field as well. I, I, I would doubt it, but we'll see. Maybe maybe I should be going Ndidi, Ndidi stuffs, right? Like maybe Ndidi Zern is just better. Like, I haven't played with this team, guys. I'm going to be honest. I have not played with this team. And you guys can see that as I'm struggling in Team Preview right now. But they actually did go Grimzard, so this is a little scary for me. And by a little scary, I mean a lot of bit scary. And the question is, who do they want to take down? I'm almost inclined to say, yeah, they'd rather get rid of Venusaur. Right? And if they're going to get rather get rid of Venusaur, I mean, I go for the Sleep Powder. In case I get it off. This is where having Torkoal in the back would be really, really clutch. And now they might think I have Torkoal in the back too, right? They don't know. They don't know that I don't have Torkoal in the back. Obviously, I shouldn't. But, they, I don't know. Can they cover for that? Uh, they are going to max immediately. If they kill Xerneas, that's fine. Because then I get the Sleep Powder off. If they kill Venusaur, well, then I get a Geomancy up. And we're okay at that point. I mean, it's still not like an amazing position. But it's something. I'm actually really shocked they led Grimstone knowing I had a DD. Like, Ndidi Landorus would have just won me this game. So my second uh, my second option there that I came up with afterwards would have been to play, but it's fine. They're going to actually just go Thunder Wave into my Xerneas immediately here. And take out my Venusaur, I feel like. <clears throat> that is probably their best play they could have gone for. They're going to Wildfire. Wildfire does go into the Venusaur. Like I said, best play they could have gone for right there. I, 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 I support that. Nothing I can do about that. Uh, they do get the crit. I don't think that mattered. I'm going to be honest. I don't think that mattered. Venusaur was dead there. We do thankfully get that Geomancy up though, which isn't bad. Because now, you know, we have that boost, which is nice. The problem is going to be actually breaking through this land, uh, this Charizard and actually finding a way to kill it. Uh, seeing the Thunder Wave though, we go Landers and I think we max the Landers. Because right now they're not in Sun. Now the problem is if they go in, if they hard switch Sun in, do we lose that that becomes the question now <sighs> Lando doesn't have protect I'd like to go for a max strike to an extent as well to get Zashin on the field but there's nothing I, I can't do I can't afford to do that right like obviously if Lando maxes and they don't have sign Lando's gonna live I think Lando is my best play and really my only play I know they're charity berry here but they shouldn't be living a double up of any sort of any sort of Rockfall plus a Dazzling Gleam, I find that very, 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 very difficult for them to live, but... Right, the problem is now, are they going to switch in Sun? Right, if they switch in Sun, this becomes problematic. I, I think what I do is I Rock Slide, and I still think I Max over here, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to Starfall, because I think if they're going to switch in Sun, they're not going to Air Scream, right? And I'm going to Starfall into the Charizard, I think if I can get this thing down, I mean, it'll be the best play possible. And if I lose Lando here, they're actually going to stay in with both. But if I lose Lando, right? If I lose Lando, my, my thing is here, if I lose Lando, I'm in Misty Terrain. And I'm in Misty Terrain and Zashian's not paralyzed. Uh, Zashian can't get paralyzed and we've chipped this, hopefully chipped this Charizard low enough to a spot where Behemoth Blade can finish it off. Uh, we are just going to see a straight up wildfire here, go straight into the Lander. So I mean, I could have maxed and lived that. Oh, uh, actually, we're going to live that anyways. Landorus is gaming. Um, anyways, so we're going to max Starfall here. Obviously, going to do some pretty nice chunks of damage right there. Get this Charizard in terrain of anything that uh, Zashian wants to go for. And now, all of a sudden, this game isn't that bad. Rockside, of course, going to proc that Charity Berry. Now, we are Life Orbed, and they are less than half. So this might actually pick up. Just shy of the knockout, which might be more beneficial for me. Because, like, I'm going to lose Lando here. We're going to see Spirit Break into Zern. That's fine. That is A-OK. -okay because this Lando... Uh, sorry, this Grim Snarl is now forced to basically click Reflect. as really one of the only things it can afford to do. And the question comes, how good is Zashian? The question becomes, how good is Zashian and how good is... How good is Imprison? Because the problem is they're going to have Zashian Ground in the back. And we all know that. Right? And with Zashian Ground in the back, I'm going to pretend... I don't think I can afford to get Imprison up and kill... You know what I mean? I don't think I can kill the Groudon in one shot. But we just Behemoth Blade to Zard just in case they decide to switch out. And we go for the Max Starfall into the Grim. If the Grim stays on the field, it's not a problem. Right? Like if I get paralyzed this way and Grim stays on the field, oh well. They just Thunder Wave in Misty Terrain. That's fine. 
Uh, that's good. No reflect is really nice, but no reflect or light screen for that matter. But Behemoth Blade, like I said, is going to finish off the Zerg. And the question now becomes, can I actually get to a... Sp Being fully paralyzed right here is better for me. And I stand by that statement. So, I wouldn't be against that. But we are unfortunately going to get, we are, unfortunately we're going to get the attack off. So the reason I say being paralyzed is better, because right now that Grim Snarl is not a threat. Can't do anything really that really hinders me. I'm not winning this game by sheer damage anyways, so if they get a reflect at the next turn, it doesn't matter. I'm winning this game by clicking Imprison when Zernia, when Zashian comes in and, and burning and buying myself a turn. Right? But now because they get Groudon and Zashian on the field at the exact same time, I'm no longer buying myself that turn. And... It's a little scary. Right? It becomes a little bit scary. The question becomes, do they call the Imprison? The problem is, if they call the Imprison, I, I don't have an out. This is the thing. My out is Dodge P-Blades. Because I can't Imprison here. I need to Imprison here so Xerneas doesn't die. But I can't Imprison here because if I Imprison here, Unless they're not AV Groudon. Unless they're just not AV Groudon. And I kill them. Because like Behemoth Blading and Max Star falling into the Groudon loses me the game anyways. So I'm going to imprison and see if I can either crit and kill this Groudon. Or just pick it off in general. Alright, we do get the imprison. They should be clicking Behemoth Blade here. If we can dodge a P-Blades, I think we win the game. Can't use Behemoth Blade. I'm fully paralyzed and can't move. That is a bad turn for that. And the Precipice Blade is going to double connect there. We're going to lose. Uh, yeah. So, like I said, we kind of... I wonder if I should have purposely not killed Grimstone all day. Right? I do wonder if I should have purposely not killed Grimstone. But I do also think I, I, I wasted my turn one. Right? My leads with this team have not been good. My end game and kind of how I've been playing the team, I don't think has been bad. Like, the, the positions I've put myself in, I think I've done the best with. I'm going to obviously jump into another one here, guys. We're only at the 22-minute mark, so getting a third game in here is not, it's not a terrible thing. But it, it's one of those things where I feel like I've just hindered myself so much on leads. No need to check that. Um, you know? Like, I've hindered myself so much with the bad leads. And I haven't been able to gain any traction because of that, right? So, like, yeah, my endgame was good. Yeah, I got Xerneas set up. But I got Xerneas set up paralyzed. And I let them get Xerneas ground on, uh, Zashian ground on, on their side of the field. And I really got nothing out of it, right? Like, I need to do a better job of preserving things. And I am now terrified. Why is there a hole? And why is there a Rayquaza? But anyways, this, uh, let's see what happens here. And I, the thing is, I can't even blame inexperience with the team for this matchup. Like, cause like, I don't know if Binji himself would even have a matchup for this in his head. Like, I don't even know what the matchup would be here. Like, I think I might have to lean a little bit harder on Ndidi. I definitely should have done that in the last match, right? Like, Ndidi, Lando, I said it in Team Preview, I just never went with it, right? It, it's, I gotta, I gotta analyze things a little bit better of the board state in Team Preview. Um, hmm. This is interesting, right? Like, ho -Oh in general is scary for this team, I think. Obviously, Lando is really nice. So I think what I want to do is go Ndidi. This time, I'm going to go the Ndidi Lando route. Um, they could be Intimidate, which is a little... Well, they are going to have Intimidate. And I feel like they're going to bring it. I still want Xerneas. Do I actually need it, though? I go Zashian for sure. Do I need Xerneas? Or Venu just better? Because I could just bench there. Because, like, realistically. But Venu also loses to ho -Oh. like, like, they both lose to ho -Oh, That's the thing. But the difference is, one of them actually has Sleep Powder. One of them has Sleep Powder, doesn't immediately die to Aleki and Oko's Gastron. I, I think that's enough enough of a reason to bring Divinu. Of course, I know we don't have Sun, which may, may be a reason to bring Zer Xerneas here, but... I, I don't know. It, you guys can see the inexperience, and, and I'm sure you can, but... It's okay, we're learning together. We'll, we'll, learn, we'll learn the team together. But this team is kind of disgusting, like... There's ho -Oh Incineroar. I'm going to go ahead and say that was not what I was expecting as a lead from my opponent. But, I mean, it's not terrible. It's not terrible for me. We have Helping Hand. We can go Helping Hand Rockfall. And I'm sure that's going to pick up. We're Life Orb. Get the Intimidate up. I know we're minus one. But if I Helping Hand, we should be alright. 
Uh, the question, the only question becomes, will they switch ho -Oh? Because if they're going to switch ho -Oh out, right, then I'm, then I'm not going to max this Lando right now. It is minus one attack. They don't really have too much for it. What I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to switch out my Lando as well. Hmm. See, I was going to expanding force, but no expanding force is a statement right now. I think I can just rock slide though. The pro I guess I just follow me, Rockslide. I guess that's safe. Get some chip damage if they decide to stay in. Forces them out, maybe, perhaps. We get to see what they want to go for. Uh, oh, perfect. I'm fine with that. Follow me, of course. We could see anything. I think they're going to try and try to get a Sacred Sword off, perhaps. Not a sorry, Sacred Fire off into my Lando to burn me. Uh, hopefully, we can get some Rockslide being a good move, but I don't think we need it here. We'll see what... I, I would rather see what uh, Incin does. But let's take a get here. Should be it's actually gonna be taunt. Which is interesting. So I'm okay with that. Right, but the problem is I don't have a switch in. Right? And now I obviously can't help a hand or heal pulse or anything here. And mystical fire is useless. So I, I think I'm gonna switch, because like I might as well keep it. And DD in the late game is nice, but the problem is what do I switch to? Like I guess I go straight into Do I double switch here? But if I double switch mm, I don't like this play, but we will go for it. I don't like this play at all, but I need to sack something because Lando is my win con. And I'm not, I don't want to toss Lando away early. Like, I can afford to lose Venusaur and still be alright. But that's perfect. That is absolutely perfect, especially if they try to go for something like a parting shot here. We get Zashin on the field as well. As long as there's no parting shot into Aditi, if, like, if this is like Dark move into Aditi, I, I don't think you could have asked for a better turn. We also do see with that switch deck that Landers is naturally faster than, not naturally, but is actually going to be faster than that Ho-Oh, which is very good knowledge to have going down the stretch. And is Instant actually going to stand the field? Are we going to see a double-double switch here, which I think would be pretty funny? Like, if okay, you're going to parting shot off the Lando? No, off the, Zerni off the uh, Zashin switch, which is probably the correct play, because, you know, Taunted and DD wants to switch out, right? So, that's fair. I mean, I don't hate this spot. You know Ho-Oh is coming back in now, though, right? You know for sure ho -Oh is coming back in. There it is. Now, the question is how do we want to play this? Right? Because I could actually switch right back into... I think I leave... As dumb as this is going to be, I'm going to leave ho uh, Zashin on the field. I'm going to Behemoth Blade. And I think I'm going to get Venusaur off the field. Actually, I think I just stay in. Right? Because like it's another one of those plays where... They're either going to go after Zashin or they're going to go after Venusaur. And leaving either of them on the field is really, really good for me. Right? You're either going to put me to sleep. Sorry, I'm either going to put you to sleep or I'm going to get a big behemoth lit off here. Looks By the looks of how they're playing this, this is Airstream into Venusaur. Just based on how they're playing this, right? They don't make that switch in if they're targeting Zashin here, I don't think. This should probably be max Airstream into Venusaur. Uh, perhaps maxing would have been a decent play. I don't want to max Venusaur in this match, though. Like... Landorus is my max, and this is okay, but this is probably going to be, like I said, Airstream into Venusaur, and if that's the case, this is a bit spooky. Because then I have to start calling whether or not they max guard, or if they're just going to attack again. But do burn a max... English, Ryan. English is hard. I do burn a turn of max right there. We're going to get the Behemoth Blade off. Obviously, not going to do crazy amounts of damage. Maybe I should have chipped the ho anyways. anyway. Wouldn't have been a bad spot to be in. There's also a chance I'm just faster with Venusaur. Which I doubt it. We are weakness policy, so I would doubt that we're in it. We are faster, and it is going to be safety goggles. Okay, good to see, though. I'm okay with that. They're just going to flare, and they're going to flare. So no speed boost, which is more than fine by me. More than fine. Because now I just have a... I threaten a huge rockfall into the... Uh, into this... Uh, what's this What's this thing called? ho oh, well. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, my brain is not working today, but we're gonna get Lando on the field here and Right now I'm getting Intimidate. The question is do I want to double Incin calling a max guard? Which I honestly don't hate that play. I think I go Airstream Sacred Sword into the Incin That's a knockout every time. Okay, I don't have Sacred Sword, so it's a little a little shaky But I do think it's still my best play, so I think I go play rough and Airstream Right, because if they if I rock fall into guard and they get a parting shot off Lando, this all all of, all of a sudden becomes bad. 
So I think I kill the instant. I don't think Ho is capable of killing me now that it's down to minus one. Instant's actually gonna hard switch out. We're gonna see the Rayquaza. Okay, so Rayquaza is just gonna die. And this is I'm okay with. So we'll see if they max guard or not. I think max guard is probably the correct play. If I'm my opponent. But we'll have to wait and see. Right? Once again, kinda like how the last time they targeted Venu after they switched an instant, I think this is a max guard based on this play. This is a max guard and a sack of the Rayquaza just on the off chance that hey I do actually don't hit the holo here they cover this right because now okay I kill Rayquaza let's just say and instant they can come back in and I'm down to minus one right there's the max guard which is fine uh, obviously I'm not going to get my airstream up which is a little unfortunate because player is just going to kill this thing but this is why Rayquaza is yo <laughs> Rayquaza good never mind I know we're neutral I know we're actually no we were minus one never mind we're minus one I thought we were neutral but we got parting shot and then Intimidate came back in, so we were indeed minus one. So that is a little bit of a misplay on my end. I mean, it still worked out, so it doesn't really matter. Like, either way, that play was correct, right? Just just the damage calc was a bit off. It actually works out better that way because now I did get the air stream, right? So now I can afford to actually almost ignore the ho again, right? I could almost ignore the ho again and just simply quake this instant now. Uh, I don't think that's the right play. I am going to preserve... Uh, do I preserve Zashin? I think I do. There's no real reason to leave it on the field here. And I think now is about time I go for a rock fall. There's no reason for me not to. Right? Once again, I'm still not threatened to die with this. Not threatened to die. They don't have a switch in for the holo. I mean, yeah, sure, Rillaboom can come in, but then they're wasting their last turn of max. Rockfall gets me out of sun. They have nothing that can actually kill my landers at the moment. They can no longer fake out. They're not going to fake out. Should be a parting shot or a flare, but they should double land out here personally. But... Big rock fall coming out. Obviously not gonna kill. We are life for it, but they are we are also minus one, so I would doubt we kill. Like Ho is not that bad of a Pokemon, and Dynamax is kinda broken. So Ho of course gonna take that, that's fine. Obviously not gonna take any sand chips since they are safety goggles, but I'm I'm okay with this. We're gonna see a max flare just to kinda get us back into the sun, into the Indeedee, that's fine. Indeedee will tank that. Yeah, when Indeedee's taking when Indeedee is living max moves, you know you're in a pretty good spot, right? So they did an airstream here. Uh, we have helping hand if we want it. And they're actually going to taunt right back into that Indeedee. That's a good call. That is a very good call. So what I think I want to do here is I'm going to airstream the instant. Mm. Right, Ho is in range of dying right now. I think Ho might be switching out. I'm going to hard switch my... I'm going to go back into... Zer I think I go back into you and... I don't need speed, right? I would airstream strictly to catch a... Simply to catch a Rillaboom switch in, but I'm gonna Quake the instant. This could be the wrong play. But if we can get this turn right and just eliminate the Incineroar, I think we win the game. Of course, they could Sacred Fire, but the thing is, at some point, they have to be scared of landers, right? Just to protect perfect like i said they have to be scared of me there i wasn't really too concerned about what hello was gonna go for uh we are gonna get a max quake into shooka berry now i know we're life for but at minus one they may be able to hold on from this they were about 50 percent but i mean it'll be close they do actually manage to hang on there which is really rough right that's that's just a nice shooka berry i mean i don't think rock does rock fall, rock fall kill there probably does actually you now looking back at that so that is a misplay on mine are we gonna see a parting shot flare blitz parting shot correct play for my opponent's end but the only good thing here is I have Indeedee in the back the only question becomes what are they gonna do with Rillaboom because you know Rillaboom comes on the field I would say Ho-Oh switches out to get Regenerator right at least that's what I would say right you get to see Regenerator here nothing crazy about it right you get your Intimidate back on the field at least that's what I would do and you probably fake out probably fake out Landers at that point but I'm gonna actually preserve Landers here. I'm gonna get Indeedee on the field just so I don't have to re read a fake out. And I'm gonna switch the Landers out just so Zashin comes on the field. And I think what I wanna do here, obviously Imprisoned useless. I mean, I could stop Protects and shut those down, but I think a Behemoth Blade into Ho-Oh either kills the Ho-Oh, which it should kill the Ho-Oh, or it's gonna kill the Instant on switching. And either of those two things happening, I think are promising for me, right? Ho-Oh can't protect. Rillaboom cannot fake out my Zashin at this moment. So we get Indeedee guaranteed on the field and Behemoth Blade takes the Ho-Oh. It takes that slot guaranteed unless they get a double protect. 
And if we're taking that slot, I think we're winning the game. Because realistically, Ho-Oh is the only thing that has enough health left with Regenerator to actually be able to deal with Zacian. Right? There's nothing they have on the left that can deal with Zacian here. They are going to switch out that Ho-Oh. That is the correct play. Right? But the thing is, hitting Rillaboom doesn't gain me anything. You know? Hitting Rillaboom here gets me nowhere. I'll hit Rillaboom next turn with a double up. Just go Mystical Fire and a Behemoth Blade. See if they do go for that fake out in the Lando though. Uh, no fake out. Also another good play. So opponent's playing well. Making the plays they need to make. Just trying to keep that Landorus in check, which is correct. Uh, if this is a U-turn, really good play. If this is a U-turn, it's just one of those plays you tip your cap on. You know? Uh, just a Grassy Glide. No. Okay, that's fine. Grassy Glide's fine. Like I said, I think they wanted to kill Landorus. Thankfully, indeed, he's going to actually survive that, which is really, really nice. So the question becomes now, is Mystical Fire Behemoth Blade better? Because, like, Rillaboom becomes the threat. Now the question is, is Rillaboom going to have Protect? That Grassy Glide did do a lot for no terrain. So I think what I want to do here... I guess it's Behemoth Blade and follow me. I, I really don't see a reason not to. Alright, Ho-Oh will be faster than the Rillaboom. So we're going to get the Ho-Oh attack into the Ndidi. Which guarantees that Zacian's attack goes into the Rillaboom here. I mean, I could have hard switched out, but that, that risks a lot. Right, this way I'm guaranteed Behemoth Blade into Rillaboom. Put it in range of another Behemoth Blade. They don't have terrain anymore. And I have a Rock Slide to win this game with Landorus. Right? Ho is going to correctly recover. That's still okay. That is still okay. I'm still not overly concerned about this. And we're probably going to see a Grassy Glide. Indeed, he's going to go down. I was not making a switch there. If I try to switch and I take damage on something that I shouldn't be taking damage on, like this Landorus. Like, if a Grassy Glide goes into Lando, I potentially all of a sudden lose. But right now, getting Intimidate on the field is just... Is this game ending, right? Because even if Rock Slide, for whatever reason, doesn't pick up this knockout, I'll be able to get a second chance at a Rock Slide, right? The only question becomes, do I want to call a Rillaboom Protect? I don't think I can call a Rillaboom Protect. I, I think this Behemoth Blade into Rillaboom is the better play. I think it's more like, whoop, not Sword Dance. I think it's more likely that ho is the one protecting. Uh, no Protects, that's fine. Behemoth Blade, and now we're going to get single target Rock Slide, which is absolutely beautiful. So Rillaboom is going to go down. I wouldn't mind seeing if that Rillaboom was AV or had Protect. Because if it had Protect, I think they had a few a few better options to actually get out of that game. We are going to go Rock Slide. Rock Slide is going to be kind to us. It is going to singly target Connect. Life Orb, Rock Slide, single target actually did not kill that ho -Oh. So that is a very bulky ho -Oh. We're going to see a Sacred Fire, but it doesn't matter. Sacred Fire, like I said, the Intimidate is going to give me another chance to get that uh, Sacred Fire, uh, to get a Rock Slide off, or really anything 100%. But at this point, just Behemoth Blade cleans this one up. So very interesting core for my opponent, I'm going to be honest. But uh, I will rock slide because it literally does not matter. Yeah, battle was canned. Beautiful. So it's one of those things where they, where as long as I position Lando properly, like that turn two, two, that turn two where I switched Lando and they switched Holo out, gave me the only information I needed to win that game. Right? I then knew my Lander Ace was faster. So as long as I kept my Lander Ace in a position where I'm faster than that Holo, we were winning that we were winning that game right as long as nothing drastically terrible happened right and i feel like i did that very very well preserved it preserved the key win condition right and that's sometimes what you got to do in this game where i guess i could have checked to see if that real had protect or not but but no i think it was well played three good games today guys i mean i got a little bit lucky in that first game of course but it is pokemon and i had a bad lead so i don't think i'm comfortable with this team but I do want to get comfortable with this team. I think this team has potential to be really, really good. Especially if you're getting calls correct. Like, if you're getting calls correct, I think this is a really tough team to shut down. Right? Because this, like, this team is all about calls, right? Like, you lead Venusaur Zashian with Torkoal in the back. What are they going to do? Right? Like, there's so many plays. There's always, I think if you do that, there's always going to be a play that wins you games. And I think that's why Sun in general, like, this, the Groudon Charizard variant is so good. Because there's all, generally, more often than not, there's going to be a play on turn one and turn two that gets you into a position to win the NBA, right? And I think this team is, is pretty similar. Obviously, this is a little bit more read-based and nothing is nearly as safe as the Groudon Charizard team. I think the Groudon Charizard team is just so consistent. But with this one, this is still, there's still, on turns one and turn two, there's still going to be reads you can make that are going to get you basically, regardless of anything, as long as you bring the right four, that you're going to have outs on turn one and turn two to get you into a safe end game right and that's what i like about teams and that's what i try to find in a team right just 
I want a team that's going to be have good matchups and a team that's going to be able to get me out of potentially bad games as long as I'm making reads correctly. And I'm going to stop rambling now because it is 40 minutes. Of course, the uh, Groudon team does that more consistently, but this team was fun, and I will catch you guys in a future video.